So it's been a big win for former President Donald Trump in the Iowa caucuses. He's polled more than 50% vote share there in the caucuses, which I believe is the biggest record for any Republican candidate in a competitive caucus in Iowa uh, since records were kept. Joining me now to try and make sense of this win and where the campaign goes from here is Ivan Rodriguez. He's CNN correspondent live for us tonight from Des Moines. Uh, in Iowa. Thank you very much, Ivan, for speaking with us here on CNN News 18. So a huge win for uh, pres former President Donald Trump. More than 50% vote share, more than one out of two Iowan Republicans uh, endorsed his candidacy for president, his shot to become president again. Uh, and I believe the largest winning margin in any competitive Republican caucus was about 12 percentage points. Trump's victory last night was 30 percentage points. What explains the the emphatic nature of this win. Uh, well, that's exactly right. And it really goes to show just the ground uh, game that was played by the Trump campaign. And when you really start to break down uh, really where they were able to find some of that success, for one, they improved drastically from 2016. Uh, they were able to get a lot of different caucus goers. For example, they really excelled in the 65-year-old and older uh, group with the white evangelicals. They also uh, did very well. And also with just uh, really pure conservative voters, uh, they did really well. Especially the issues that mattered to Iowans the most were the economy and immigration. And uh, the former president did exceedingly well in those two categories as well, getting a high percentage of vote uh, from Iowans. Trump, as you said, was expected to do well in the rural conservative parts of Iowa, the north and the northwest of the state. But he also surprisingly did well in the urban and semi-urban pockets around Iowa City, around Des Moines, uh, amongst college educated uh, uh, young people, uh, college educated Republicans as well. So what explains that? The fact that he was able to bring both ends of the Republican voter base, both the conservative evangelical Christian uh, uh, rural folks as well as the urban and semi-urban folks. Well, it really goes to show, again, just the, the different mindset that the campaign had going in uh, to this uh, Iowa caucus, especially compared to 2016, where they really didn't do uh, that well at all. And Ted Cruz com came out with the win uh, back then for the Iowa caucus in 2016. Uh, but the question now really is, how can they take what they accomplished here in Iowa and let's say transfer that uh, to New Hampshire, to South Carolina, where the voter base is very different. In Iowa, uh, we really are diff looking at a different Republican uh, base when you compare it to New Hampshire, uh, for example. And that's where, really where we begin to see uh, maybe some key differences, especially in the polling. Uh, early on, polling in Iowa uh, showed that you know Donald Trump always had that substantial lead. Nikki Haley followed. In New Hampshire, it's similar, but the gap is actually a lot closer than what it was here in Iowa, where it really seemed like there was no other option than for the former president to come out with the win. In New Hampshire, it's definitely a lot closer. We're seeing right now latest polling showing uh, the former president right around 39 percent of supporters, likely uh, primary voters. Nikki Haley is right around 32 percent. Uh, so we're really going to see a tight race there. I think that when we're talking about how well Ron DeSantis did in Iowa, it might be more of an uphill climb when we see uh, what he can do in New Hampshire because latest polls shows he's gathering just about 5% of the vote. I do want to talk about those who came second and third. First, Governor DeSantis of Florida who came second. Uh, he had invested a lot of time and money in the Iowa campaign. He was hoping that he could run Trump close, but eventually the distance was far too much almost 30 percentage points between Mr. Trump and Mr. DeSantis. Where does DeSantis go from here? There is New Hampshire up next, next week uh, where the voters are, are much more moderate. They are not as conservative as Iowans are. And then it goes to South Carolina, which is Nikki Haley's home state. So where does the campaign shape up for Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida after what we saw last night in Iowa? So it really is going to come down to how he can do in New Hampshire. And it's interesting the strategy here that the candidates that we're beginning to see that the candidates have because Ron DeSantis today is traveling to South Carolina where we're seeing Nikki Haley, for example, go straight to New Hampshire. Their primary is exactly a week from today. So you begin to see how important South Carolina is 
for uh, Governor Ron DeSantis. Again, it's the home territory of Nikki Haley. So if Ron DeSantis can pull away with a win in South Carolina, he really could be in a good position heading in to Super Tuesday in March. Uh, so it, it, it's interesting in that regard. Nikki Haley, you know, uh, was asked what she thought about Ron DeSantis' strategy of going to South Carolina first. And she said, you know, maybe someone should let the campaign uh, for Ron DeSantis know that New Hampshire is next. So we're going uh, to New Hampshire after this. But, you know, Ron DeSantis, uh, it should be said as well, will be going to New Hampshire later this evening as well. There's going to be a town hall there in New Hampshire. Uh, so he is playing both, but you can see a clear focus as he goes down the line uh, to South Carolina, where he believes a lot of voters will be more attracted to his campaign than Nikki Haley's. Let's also talk about Nikki Haley. Uh, you know, all through 2023, she was polling in single digits. She had very bad uh, field organization in Iowa. But to come up with 19% of the votes uh, in the caucuses is pretty impressive. She's got strong states coming up in New Hampshire, as you said a moment ago. Uh, she's polling almost neck and neck with Donald Trump. And then there is South Carolina, which is a home state. She's been former governor there. Uh, where does her campaign go from here on? I think that for the Haley campaign, it really all comes down to New Hampshire now because the expectations are pretty high. I think that after Iowa, you can get a sense that there's maybe some disappointment because there was an expectation with that latest poll of Haley coming in second right before the Iowa caucus that maybe she could outperform Ron DeSantis. I think in that specific poll, it was only one part of the picture because the other part was the enthusiasm. And we saw that the enthusiasm from Ron DeSantis supporters was a lot higher than what we were seeing from Nikki Haley. At least that's what the statistics uh, were showing. That's what the polling said. So maybe that played an edge for uh, Ron DeSantis. But again, Nikki Haley really has all on the line here in New Hampshire. And as you mentioned, they're sort of neck and neck in Haley and Trump. So it really is one of those tightest races that we're seeing right now in terms of polling that could be one of the most challenging ones right now for the former president. But if the former president gets ahead of New Hampshire and comes away with a win next week, there really isn't uh, many other states where you could even consider them uh, battlegrounds uh, for Haley or Ron DeSantis to really get into the lead. So if if former President Trump wins in New Hampshire, it could be a clear pathway uh, to the nomination as well. We also heard Haley, though, uh, last night during her speech sort of make that comparison uh, between herself and former President Trump and current President Joe Biden, uh, saying that she's the antidote for, you know, a potential rematch uh, between Trump and Biden. And she, you know, played up the argument that a lot of Americans are tired with uh, you know the current president and also the former president she she went on to say in quote part that trump and biden both lack a vision for our country's future because both are consumed by the past by investigations vendettas and, and by grievances and she went on to say that america deserves better and finally ivan let's talk about the fourth candidate vivek ramaswamy who dropped out of the race after last night's results uh he of course came from nowhere he polled about eight percent uh, eight percentage points in iowa uh, he's quickly endorsed Donald Trump as well. Why is it that his campaign, and he was trying to pitch himself as, you know, the inheritor of the MAGA legacy, the inheritor of Donald Trump's politics, why didn't that resonate with Iowans? Well, you know, and Ramaswamy actually spent a, a lot of time in Iowa, and he went to a lot of counties, you know, meeting with so many uh, potential voters and voters who, who, you know, attended those caucuses. Uh, I think that what's interesting specifically with Ramaswamy is, you know, he came in fourth, he dropped out of the race, as we know, and then endorsed, you know, quickly uh, the former president. Uh, I think that when we are talking, though, about the future, and where we can see, you know, the supporters of Ramaswamy go in that poll that we've been talking about for New Hampshire, it still had Ramaswamy in, you know, the race. It still had Chris Christie, for example, in the race. So we'd assume now that with the endorsement of for Ramaswamy of Trump, that a lot of those voters, a lot of his base will be heading directly uh, to the former president. So let's see if that gives him a boost in New Hampshire. But on the other hand, uh, Chris Christie was pulling right around 12 percent in New Hampshire. So again, now we'll see if that is good news for Nikki Haley as well. But uh, yeah, for, for Ramaswamy, I, I think it 
if you look a year back, not too many people even knew who Ramaswamy was. And today, I think it is uh, an accomplishment that he even finished ahead of the likes of, for example, Asa Hutchinson. All right, CNN's Ivan Rodriguez, live for us uh, from Des Moines, Iowa. Thank you very much for joining us.